A lot of people are wondering what the Fed's doing. They're wondering what kind of economic policy these guys will have. Will they really be as anti-free trade as they say they are? But I think the markets are to come to expect a large fiscal stimulus program, whether it's Trump, whether it's Clinton. The name of the game in the first 100 days will be fiscal stimulus and how big. Student loans. To me, I think this is a this is a tremendous burden on young and middle-aged people, and particularly the way that they engage in the student loans without getting a true value in many cases. I think this is a burden that we, that we have to look at. Uh, inequality would probably be the number one issue, and trying to close the gap. You mean wage and? Yeah, I think wage inequality. Yes. The assumption here is a president can fix anything. So a president who gets along with the other party and the Congress and tries to reach some center on tax policy and finance and rules could improve things. But the assumption is get along, don't fight, collaboratively attempt to improve things. So the next president needs to collaboratively try to improve things, anything, stop the fight. Aggregate debt, because ultimately it will bite us in you know where. I think overregulation, because what we see now is we see entrepreneurs being stifled, we see businesses having a difficult time growing and hiring upper level people. So I think that if we were to be a little bit more business friendly, um, if we were to try to take entrepreneurship and foster that, we'd be a little better off. I would say tax reform. That's both personal and particularly corporate tax reform. So. Uh, I, I would put that at the top of the list. That includes lots of different things because once you change the tax structure, then how about the expenditure side if you raise or lower taxes. But I think corporate tax reform and even individual tax reform would be, I think, priority number one. Well, I think the most prominent global theme that's occurring right now is the level of wealth inequality and, frankly, in many situations, the political as well as economic distress that's causing it. Uh, it's going to be how to revitalize the economy um, and in all senses of the word. How do we get back on a track toward higher labor force participation, uh, greater investment, higher productivity growth rates, uh, and ultimately um, a greater, uh, a more equitable distribution of uh, income and rising standards of living for median families. I think that is the top by any measurement. I think if you ask economists and particularly ask pollsters and surveyors, uh, that's why most people think we're on the wrong track. There are other things too, deeper social cultural concerns, but I think Inevitably, a lot of what a president has to deliver, first and foremost, is economic success, and those are the criteria I would use. I think healthcare is a big issue, and we need to encourage innovation in healthcare. Um, I do a lot of work with impact investing, and I think there's a lot of healthcare breakthroughs that could now be considered impact investing, and those are not going to continue if. Uh, we have a system that disincentivizes innovation um, in that or any other industry. I think the number one issue is dealing with the kind of perverse monetary policy that we're dealing with, the, the potential dis chance for negative interest rates in the United States, the lack of velocity, this large growth in, in monetary supply. I think we have to deal with this issue. Stimulating economic growth. Uh, when economic growth, when GDP growth is uh, nominal GDP growth is below about four and a half percent, it's trouble. And uh, you've seen a lot of uh, political fallout around the world actually because of slow growth and the U.S. is no exception. And, uh, I think that's the biggest challenge to the next president.